Good morning, welcome back to the channel, and welcome to the four worst rated dishes in Madeira. And I know you're probably thinking, but Joe, you like Madeira food. And yes, that's true, so let me explain. This morning, I woke up thinking, what am I gonna film today? The weather's not quite what I wanted, so I had to replan. And whilst I was looking around online, I came across an article by Taste Atlas called The Four Worst Rated Dishes in Madeira. And I don't know about you, maybe, it's because I woke up at 4 a.m. And anyway, I was triggered by it and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna film it. I'm gonna film that video and see if they're right and show you if they're right. First up, we have the Broas Mel de Cana, the sugarcane syrup biscuit, very famous in Madeira. And it's from a place called Fabrica San Antonio and we will go there. But to be honest, I just bought these in the supermarket. The good thing here is, Every supermarket has a section with the regional food and you can buy things like this. It was two euros 55 and it's best to eat them with a the coffee. So come to a place called The Studio Coffee and got a flat white. I've never been here before, so it was a good excuse to try it out too. Speciality coffee shop. They are starting to pop up here now in Funchal, which is very good news for me, not just the local stuff. But we're not really here for the coffee today. We're here for these biscuits and you can see exactly how they look little biscuits made with the sugarcane syrup produced here on the island as i said and in there you also have well you have flour you have eggs you have sugar you have the sugarcane syrup and you have spices which i believe would be you can smell it to be honest you've got nutmeg you've got cloves and you've got cinnamon and actually that is the first thing that hits you from that the smell the smell of those spices and you can smell the dark toasted molasses sugarcane syrup, I guess, flavor. Well, first of all, let's try it. Let's just try it on its own. It is delicious. It's a hard biscuit, very crunchy, very crunchy in your mouth, but then it just crumbles away. And those spices, the warming spices, reminds me of Christmas. They are traditionally eaten at Christmas, but you buy them all year round here now, to be honest, let's, let's be fair, but very, very Christmassy in their flavor. The spices, the warming spices, just come through and totally fill your mouth with that flavor. Very, very good. Incidentally, they're called a broas de mel because they look like little loaves. The word broas is for loaf, and they do look like little loaves, but very delicious biscuit. Let's see how it tastes in the coffee. You have to have it. I feel like I'm ruining in a coffee before actually trying it. But like I said, we're here for the biscuit, so you have to have a dip, don't you? British, after all, dip it in that latte and then try it. You can never go wrong with a good biscuit dipped in a good tea or a good coffee in this case. It goes, well, I'm sure you've guys done it. If you've not done it, do it. The biscuit melts a little in the, in the coffee and then you put it in your mouth and it just disappears. Very, very good. Very good with the coffee flavor, I must say. So, if that's on the list, we're already giving them a big cross for their clickbait article because those biscuits are delicious. I guarantee you'll like them. I'm going to finish the coffee and then we're probably going to go find that espada with banana, the black scabbard fish with banana, the famous Madeiran dish, let's say, and I've never had it before. So let's go find one. Right, to be honest, I could go to the old town and find Spada con banana everywhere, but if you're going to have it, may as well try and have a good version. And just coming past the cathedral, get these touristy restaurants. For me, for me, I'm saying, I'm not judging, but restaurants to avoid. But if you come down here and then nip down one of the side streets, you'll get some more local offerings and some nice snack bars, some good snack bars where you can get some good food filled with locals as well, so you know. It's a good place to eat. So we're just gonna head down one of them to one of the little snack bars and try and get a spada con banana. And it looks full already. I actually came earlier and she told me they didn't serve food till 12, but looks like she stitched me up. Anyway, there's this place, it's called Vera Cruz. And there's one seat there, but well, there is a seat. Maybe, maybe we'll be all right, but it's called Vera Cruz. It's, a small little snack bar, totally filled with locals, as you can see. I mean, it's absolutely round. This is a lady who told me to come back, so we'll watch her smile when she, uh, when she sees that it's busy. But 
They, have, of course, have menu of the day, plates of the day, all sorts of food here. I've never eaten here, but it's, it's highly rated and it's full of locals. When it's full of locals, it's not a bad place to be. So I think we're going to try and find it here. Okay, menu wise, they have it, scabbard fish with banana. I mean, to be honest, <laughs> to be honest, I would just get the scabbard fish on its own, but we are trying the four worst rated dishes in Madeira and it's on there and it's a new one for me. So let's try it together. All right, it's arrived, it's hit the table and well, it is what it is. Salad, full potatoes and then the espada, the black scabbard fish underneath and the banana on top. Both are fried. It looks actually like the espada is well, probably dipped in flour, dipped in egg, crumbed or battered at least and then deep fried and the banana is just on the grill plate soft actually you can feel it it's definitely been grilled sat on top now they will tell you this is a traditional dish in madeira but i've been coming here nearly well nearly seven years i've been definitely coming here six years and i've never eaten it and i've never eaten it and there's a reason for that it's really for the tourists they've just taken two dishes that are or two ingredients that are popular here the espada and the banana and stuck them together and said, hey guys, we have espada con banana. So I've never eaten it. I've been a bit derogatory on it, if I'm honest, but first time for everything, right? Open mind, let's try it. All right, I've been putting this off long enough. Just had a chat actually with some nice guys who subscribed as they were walking past, shouted out. So I'm just gonna get some lemon on that, lemon on the salad as well. And I'm gonna put it off even longer. I'm going to add a bit of olive oil onto my salad. As I say, it doesn't come dressed here and a little bit on those potatoes as well. Oh. I need to I need to get in an open mindset because when I told someone when I told someone that I was having this, <laughs> the first thing they said was what you but you're not going to like that. So uh, let's see. Let's go for a let's go for a mouthful of the espada and of the banana. You can see the espada is a white fish. It's deep sea fish. We've seen it before. I filmed it before. Deep sea, long, black, huge teeth, big eye, because obviously there's not much light down there. It's very, very delicious. I do like it. Super, super traditional in Madeira. Very famous. Everyone eats it. But first time with banana. <laughs> I must admit, <laughs> how do I say this nicely? The bananas in Madeira are very good. I love the bananas in Madeira. Some of the best bananas you can get. Actually tastes of what it's meant to taste like. The espada, the fish in Madeira. The espada is so fresh. It's caught every single day, so you know it's good quality. They know how to cook it. It's delicious. Espada and banana. There's a reason why it's a tourist dish and the locals don't really eat it. <laughs> I'm not the biggest fan. Maybe I'll eat them separately. <laughs> See, if you notice, well, you won't notice, but I notice, everyone else is ordering this without the banana. And that's the trick because the espada itself, the espada, the espada is good, it's meaty, it's soft. It's a sweet tasting fish, it's very delicious. And with that batter, almost tastes a bit like English fish and chips, I must admit. I mean, you can get chips here and you can get the meat of fruit all here, but I thought we'd go somewhere else for that. So it is very delicious. Mm. Potatoes are good. It's a very typical lunch, actually. You get the plate for six to 12 euros is probably depending is the price, depending on what you get with the salad, with the potatoes. I could have had rice as well included in that, but you know, carb overload. We'll give it another go. It just doesn't work. The banana overpowers the fish. And when you're eating fish, that is the last thing you want. Yeah. Maybe Taste Atlas were onto something after all. Just want to be clear, I'm not slating the snack bar. The food itself is actually really good. The espada is delicious. Oh, I'm not going to say the banana is delicious, but the espada is delicious. It's very typical, as I said. It's very honest. It's very authentic. It's very busy. 
I mean, it's ridiculously busy. The waitresses are running around like headless chickens, but there's obviously a reason for that. It's a good place. I should come here again and review it properly, eat a proper lunch that I want to eat because it actually does look quite good seeing what people are ordering. So I'm definitely not criticizing Better Cruise. You guys should probably add it to your list. I'll add it on my map. If you haven't got my food map in Madeira, check the description or check the pinned comment. My food map of the best places to eat in Madeira is there. What you should do is scratch Banana Madeira or Banana Spada, sorry, off your list. Don't believe all of the articles that say, ah, oh, you should eat it. It's one of the most traditional dishes in Madeira. Don't do it. Do not do it. <sighs> 11 euros 50. Pretty good for the portion. The portions are huge at that place. Some of the other plates were even bigger. But I can't say I'll be rushing back to have a spada con banana again. <laughs> Just stick with your spada. Anyway, let's go find some mil frito. Well, there seems to be an island shortage of mil frito today. Other than the old town or the Zona Velha, which I don't really want to eat at, I've been to a couple of places and they're sold out. So I'm back to an old favorite. Back to Bella Five snack bar. So let's go in and let me show you the mil frito. You guys know I love this place and I did come just for the meal frito, but <laughs> they won't let me just have the meal frito. So he's offered me some tuna. Looks absolutely amazing. He was very proud to show me that. And tuna is just coming into season. We're going to have tuna and meal frito. Okay. See? It's arrived. Well, I want to dive straight into the tuna, to be honest, because it looks so good. But we're actually here for the milio. I need to remember the theme of the video, the four worst dishes in Madeira. And this is milio, milio frito, the thing that was on the list. Very, very popular in Madeira, one of the most famous dishes in Madeira. So I was really surprised to see it on the list. Essentially, it is cornmeal, very fine ground. <clears throat> so it's super busy. Well, I mean, it's super busy in here. We're out near the road, so it's a bit loud. So apologies if you can't hear me, but it is cornmeal, ground cornmeal. Think of it a bit like polenta, but it's ground very fine. It's cooked. It's cooked out with water, with salt, with some lard and olive oil. That's really what gives it the flavor. Lard, I think, is the trick in there. It's then set, set into a sheet. It's then cut into cubes and then deep fried. And you can see how crispy and golden it's gone from deep frying in that fryer. There's also a little bit of collard greens in there, or sometimes they put kale instead, but traditionally it's meant to be collard greens. And that's what you can see with the, the green flecks in it. On the inside, it's soft, it's fluffy. You can just see that. Look at that, steaming straight out of the fryer. It's hot, <laughs> it's very hot. But for me, absolutely delicious. Oh, come on. Crunchy, soft and fluffy in the middle. Rich, rich flavor from that, from that lard, from the greens, from the salt. Tastes a little bit of garlic in there, but he tells me there is no garlic in there, so obviously I'm getting that wrong. Oh man, it's so delicious. It is impossible for it to be on that list of the four worst dishes in Madeira. And normally, it's super popular with things like espada, but they have it with everything. To be honest, in Madeira, they have potatoes or fries, meal frito and rice. It's like carb overload. I don't like doing that. But in this case, he's told me, he, actually, he didn't ask me, do I want some tuna with it? He said, you have to have some tuna with it and came out and showed me the tuna. So even though we're on a eating mission today, I am going to dive into the tuna and I'm going to show you guys because the tuna here, the tuna in this place, in Bella Five snack bar is incredible. And the tuna in Madeira is really good. So it is yellowfin tuna. It's given me this sauce. Now I've never had it with this sauce before. So I'm quite interested in that. You can just see what it is. I have no idea actually. Mm. Whoa. Lots of vinegar, garlic, onion. Mm, super delicious. It's going to go really well with that tuna, so I'm just going to smother that tuna with it and get that on the side. And that will also actually go well with the medio, because the medio is rich, it's fried, obviously, so that acidity will cut through it. I have ordered the tuna, very raw, very pink, as you can see, that's how I like it. He knows that. It's not how it's cooked in Madeira, so he's still like, sure, sure, are you sure? 
Mm. And yes, I'm sure. Wow. Wow. That tuna, as I said, it's coming to season. Just look at that. Absolutely delicious. Nothing else can be said, to be honest. That mealy on the side, it's so good. And different people will have slightly different recipes. Sometimes a little more cabbage, sometimes garlic in, as I said, black pepper. They're so Moorish, you just want to keep dropping them in your mouth. And some people, they'll fry them to different levels. Like these, these are medium fried, I'd say. They're still nicely golden. As you can see, they're still nicely golden, but some people will fry them really hard and they'll get really super crunchy. I love those as well. It just kind of depends on the place. Mil frito should be on your list of top things to eat in Madeira. And especially since it's synonymous and you know it's from, from Madeira in that sense, you should be finding it or seeking it out. I mean, you'll see it everywhere. It's on every menu, apart from the day that I try and order it, <laughs> obviously. Anyway, I'm gonna enjoy my meal and then we'll head on to the next dish on the list, which will be bol de mel. Let's do it. Finally, the bolo de mel, the Madeira honey cake. And I've come to a place which I think does the best version of it. There are a few different versions, a few different brands that do it. But this place for me is the best. Fabrica Santo Antonio, right in the town. And they've been here, or they've been going since 1893. And this is their shop. They sell it again, they sell it in the supermarket. But this is their shop. Little board telling you a little bit of the history. The shop is beautiful in itself with all the products on the side laid out. So this is the shop, they also make it here. They actually make it upstairs and they make it out back, which is pretty cool. It started off as biscuits, but they also have the cake as well. And I love their branding. Pretty cool branding, isn't it? Anyway, old scales, nice shop. But we're here for the cake, the bottle of the mel. Bon dia. <laughs> to the bank. <laughs> um, can I have um, un bottle of the mel? The, you have a small one? I think and for me, just a small one. Small one? Yeah. And um, I think for now, this is okay. Okay. Oh, right. They didn't want to speak that much English in there. They're a bit shy. One of them just said flat out refused, and the other one didn't speak that much. <laughs> anyway, let's go find somewhere to try it. All right, guys. Well, I wanted to go and sit in the park, but there was either music playing or there was construction work. So we're street side. Next to a nice mural, I guess. But the bolo de mel, the final thing on the list of the four worst dishes, or the four worst rated dishes in Madeira. It was 3 95 There are two options. There's a small one, which is the one I got, or there's a larger one, which is just over six euros. That place is popular because the food tours or the tour groups go there. And as soon as I purchased, basically, I was flooded with people, but it was cool in there. I did want to ask them more about it, but as I said, they were shy. I think she half said there were two levels of production there. I mean, it would be cool to see it, and maybe one day I can organize it and we can go and see how they're made, but who knows with them being shy, but I should get this open, shouldn't I? As I said, I love the branding. I love the box. The traditional, the local Madeira honey cake made with sugarcane syrup. And it's not the only thing made here with sugarcane syrup. The rum festival is just about to kick off. And that's made with the sugarcane as well, sugarcane rum or agrodente. But this bolo, this cake, is one of my favorite sweet treats here in Madeira. And I'm not gonna try and reel off the top of my head what's in it. I'm gonna read it out to you. So we have almonds, walnuts, the sugarcane syrup, sugar, flour, butter, Sultanas, cinnamon, fennel, cloves, nutmeg, orange, and a few other bits and bobs in there. As I said, 1893, and you can see the almonds on top and the walnut in the middle. And if you think I'm being a bit, well, not very hygienic, using my hands and breaking it open, this is how you're meant to eat it. You're not meant to use a knife. You're not meant to cut it up. You're meant to pull it apart and break your piece off it and take a chunk and eat it like that. It's so good. Again, synonymous with the flavors of Christmas because of the cinnamon, because of the nutmeg, because of the cloves, but that dried fruit, the cherries, the citron, it's so delicious. And then you get the crunch of that nut on top as well, the almond and the walnut. 
the sweetness from the sugarcane syrup that goes into there. Oh, I just love that stickiness. It's moist and yes, yeah, sticky in the mouth. You can see why, well, most people keep them for a year traditionally, so they'll make them in December to replace the ones they made the year before and they'll eat them around Christmas time. But they can be kept for up to five years, five years keeping the cake. And you can see why, because of how sticky and moist it is. There's a reason, there's a reason that I bought the small one, not because of the price. I mean, it's a couple of euros difference, but because it's so Moorish. You take a piece and you think it's enough and you eat it and you think, oh, that's good. And then your head just says, eat more, eat more. And you want just a little bit more and you keep going, you keep going, you keep going, and then it's gone. So considering I'm meant to be losing weight, not putting on weight, I bought the small one, but it is delicious. Another one that Taste Atlas got wrong. If you can believe that, worst rated dish in Madeira, I don't think so. All right, well, that was fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Throw a spada with banana in the bin, and when you come here, eat the rest. Very, very good. Don't listen to those clickbait articles. Hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.